Stars are the most common visible objects on the sky. You can see thousands of them on a clear night by naked eye. The Milky Way uh, is resolved into stars when you look at it through a binocular. When you have a small telescope, millions of stars are visible through it. In fact, our galaxy contains over 200 billions of stars. What is more, there are hundreds of or even billions of such galaxies, all being composed of that huge amount of stars. So, well, these tiny, shiny, twinkling objects on the sky are for the universe what the individual cells are for the human body. They are the basic building blocks. So the study of stars has its importance in astronomy. Solar oscillations are in fact seismic waves which are similar to the earthquakes. They propagate through the whole body of the sun and their investigation is currently about the only means of probing the internal structure of the sun using the fact that the properties of these uh, solar oscillations depend on the physical properties of the matter along their trajectory inside the sun. Now the sun shows several thousands of simultaneous and continuous oscillation modes. There is a dedicated branch of astronomy which studies them. It is called helioseismology. And it proved to be hugely successful in discovering the internal structure of the sun. Now, similar to our sun, almost every star, every distant star, has its own oscillation modes. Some stars, the so-called classical pulsators, they pulsate in one or two modes, but with high amplitude. Others have a large number of smaller amplitude pulsations. Depending on their type and excitation mechanism, these oscillation waves traverse various internal portions of the star, causing a periodic displacement of the star's material. Now, the manifestation of the, these pulsations on the surface is a characteristic pattern of brightness variations, which can be described theoretically with so-called spherical harmonic functions. There are areas which oscillate in the same phase and other areas which oscillate in opposite phase. These patches are separated by horizontal and vertical node lines along which there is no oscillation. Every such surface pattern is characterized by a pair of two integer numbers, which describe the number and distribution of these patches and node lines. Namely, the first one, L, is the degree of the mode. It is the total number of node lines. The second one, M, is the azimuthal order of the mode, telling us how many of the node lines are in longitude, dissecting the star into sectors. The frequencies of the pulsation tell us something about the sizes of the various layers of the stellar interior. By the surface patterns of the pulsation, they contain information about the local physical conditions, pressure, density and temperature. So appropriate so-called asteroseismic inversion techniques are able to infer these physical parameters from the oscillational properties. Now they require the so-called mode numbers that identify the different patterns to be identified, which means that for each observed frequency we have to know these mode numbers. If an oscillating star happens to be a member of an eclipsing binary system, now that scenario offers the possibility first to determine the stellar parameters with a high degree of accuracy and second to reconstruct its pulsation patterns using various inversion methods, which make use of the effective surface, surface sampling that occurs during the eclipses. If we know what is eclipsed, that is the surface maps, and how it is eclipsed, that is, we know the system geometry, then it is straightforward to compute a corresponding light curve, as shown in the animations. The inverse problem, however, getting to the images from 1D light curves is highly ill-posed 
in the sense that there will be an infinite number of maps or solutions, some of them even highly unphysical or unprobable, that will fit the data within the measurement errors. Nevertheless, the problem can be regularized by selecting a most simple solution that explains the data and has some a priori expected properties. This is the basic principle of the inversion methods. There are various approaches to such an inversion depending on what a priori assumptions are made on the solution. An eclipse mapping method, for example, treats the patterns as generic images with some minimal expectable properties. Pulsation patterns always obey an axial symmetry around the rotation axis of the star. Now this expectation is the key to a successful reconstruction and mode identification. But it also limits the method to the cases when the rotation axis of the stars is known. Uh, these inversion methods are in fact sophisticated model fitting methods. They require careful modeling and very accurate data. Fortunately, data of such quality are recently acquired with dedicated space telescopes like Koro and Kepler. As a first application, I chose a system that was recently observed by the Kepler Space Telescope. This is a well-detached binary with eccentric orbits, deep eclipses and over 150 position modes on one of its components, with eight modes being most dominant over the others. I carried out the reconstruction of the eight dominant position modes Three modes were readily identified by direct examination of the images, cleaning them from the data and repeating the procedure allowed the ident identification of another two modes. This is still a work in progress. The goal is to progressively map and identify as many position modes as the data allow. The frequencies and identified mode numbers then can be used to do an astroseismic inversion of the star's internal structure. Ultimately, we plan to apply the method to other suitable stellar systems observed by Kepler and Corot.